Just fine, here we go. We're going to read from James, the good book. I like James. We've been talking about uh, <coughs> several things in the first chapter already, and especially uh, it talks about the Word of God that uh, has been engrafted into us by the teaching, and uh, we are to receive it with meekness, which means we have a teachable, teachable attitude towards the Bible. And then, when we hear it, we are to be doers of that. Now, you know when you have talked and trained your children, you expect them to do what you tell them to do. <laughs> hey, now don't turn that thing around on God. Uh, you were learning to obey God when you were kids, learning to obey your parents. That's why God put parents in the lives of children. Now it's, yeah, parents are still there, but now it's mainly God, your Heavenly Father, teaching us to be doers. And if we don't do, then we're like a person that looks in a mirror and sees the mess, walks away and doesn't do anything about it. <laughs> First thing in the morning, you know, folks, it's wash rag time. Wash your face. Mom says, behind your ears, too. Why not? So with God, he's told us to read the Bible and do what it says. Uh, and you'll be blessed. Now this morning we want to read two verses and give our time to verse 26 and 27. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, he deceiveth his own heart, in so doing, and so therefore this man's religion is vain. 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now those are two verses that so much can be said about. So we have considered how important the Bible is, all those scriptures, and how important it is to heed what the Bible says. And that's good. But you'll notice that almost immediately after he, he says that, he changes the subject again. And he goes to something that applies to us very personally. First of all, bridle your tongue. And secondly, consider your religious status. So right now, if you're formulating a lesson, you've got two points to talk about. And that's what we're gonna do. First off, we are to bridle the tongue. I guess that's simple enough. Now, James just told us to be slow of speech. You'd think that'd be enough. So he starts in again, and in essence, he says it's all about the tongue. Now, why didn't he talk about other things? I don't know, but I have suspicion that the tongue is a pretty important part of life in our status before God. We can go to church, read the Bible, do a lot of things along that line, but you better control your tongue, James says. Yeah, but. 
there's times, <laughs> there's times. Well, he says, control your tongue, and if you don't, you're deceiving yourself. Okay, what does that mean? Well, obviously, an unbridled tongue cannot and is not a part of living a godly life, an unbridled tongue. It just isn't. Anyone who lives the Christian life has to talk to his tongue. Maybe shake a finger at his tongue. <laughs> Whether you want to force it one way or the other, try to do both. It still comes back to the fact we have to bridle that tongue. And he is saying this as much to you as to me and the next fellow. This is your assignment, my assignment. And I take it very personally. Dick, do a better job with your tongue. Yes. Our religion is to help us in this, and I'm sure what we know about the scriptures, it does. So this concept is very meaningful. We need to pay it heed. So if we don't, we're turning ourselves upside down and deceiving ourselves when we don't bridle the tongue. So our tongue, and it has been well said, can be set on fire of hell. And the unbridled tongue, I think, is one of the main ways that a person can go straight to hell. Why do I say that? You think of the damage that is done by the tongue. Some people's lives, some homes have been, uh, as a whole, couples uh, have been absolutely turned upside down because of somebody's tongue. Maybe several somebody's tongue. And you know, when one person gets it started, people tend to believe it easily. We've all experienced it to some degree. But James, James still says, you need to apply the golden rule to your tongue or you're deceiving yourself. Someone said this, some people have as their motto, if you can't say anything good about a person, let's hear it. Take you a while to catch on to that one. Someone else said, there's no idle rumors. Rumors are always busy. Someone else said, a scandal is one thing that has to be bad before it can be good. They make you think, don't they? Someone else described a wise person as saying, you are Lord of your tongue, but I am also master of my ears. And both are involved. If I'm pretty careful about what I let my ears hear, that will help the other person be a little bit more careful about the tongue that is speaking. So we can be deceived, folks. And one of the biggest deceptions, I say, that it's so easy to take up with the bad that we don't take time to find out if it's true. There's a gob of liars in society. Then he said also, a person's religion is vain if we don't bridle our tongue. Now what do you think about that? You know there's a lot of things that can negate our worship and religion. Yeah. Sing all you want, pray all you want, go to church all you want and work. 
but if we br bridle not our tongue, that stuff that you've done for God is worthless. All done in vain. And I'll tell you this, there can be some church people that are more vicious with their tongue than anyone else. You expect it from the other people, you don't expect it with a religious one. You know, we're laying up treasures in heaven. And I'd hate to think that our tongue would negate everything we've tried to lay up in heaven. So what more could be said to emphasize the importance of proper respect of our speech? Watch it every day. If you've damaged someone's integrity, I think there needs to be something that happens to offset that. But that's pretty hard to do. So I say, O oh Lord, help me to guard my words, help me to guard my tongue. And this is what James is shouting to us all the way back from the days of the apostles. Bridle your tongue. I want to read you something here. You've heard of John Wesley. He was quite a uh, teacher, preacher, reformer back in his day. And in 1752, uh, he and a group of men, uh, they were nicknamed Methodists back then, carried over to today. They signed a covenant which every man would hang on his steady wall. There were six articles and they all agreed to follow them. And here's the six. Number one, that we will not listen or willingly inquire after ill concerning anyone. Don't be eager to find the gossip, the things that shouldn't be said in the first place. Have you ever had things said about you that were absolutely not true? <coughs> and it covered the countryside? Don't eagerly collect that kind of stuff. And especially don't get on the phone and repeat. Like the old telephone. Number two, that if we do hear any ill of each other, we will not forward, be forward to believe it. Don't be so quick to, oh, I just knew that was true. Don't be so quick to take up with it. You know, they say, take that with a grain of salt. But this kind of stuff, I think we need to double check. And I've made it a priority. Make absolutely sure something is true. And then be slow to repeat it, only if, it, if there's a helpfulness in it. Here's number three. That as soon as possible, we will communicate what we hear by speaking or writing to the person concerned. Now, who's, who's this being said about? Okay. Uh, one way to really shut it off, uh, let's both go and talk to that person. <laughs> Yeah, let's both go and talk to that person. That'll stop a whole lot of stuff. They agreed, number four, that until we have done this, we will not write or speak a syllable of it to any other person until you've talked to the person who's being talked about. 
Number five, they agreed together that neither will we mention it after we have done this to any other person. Well, that sure stop a whole lot of stuff. Number six, that we will not make any exception to any of these rules unless we think ourselves absolutely obligated in the matter. Shut the water off. So there you have something that's very important that has come to us from the book of James. If a person's, if a person's tongue is not controlled, their religion is vain. So I'm inclined to stop there and let that settle in so that I can think about it myself. Especially those six agreements. Just be slow, so slow to hear and especially to pass on without checking it out. And remember the golden rule. Do you want this in your behalf? What you are saying in behalf of someone else? Only if it can profit in some way should any of this stuff be passed on. And even then, don't pass on something that can cause a hurt or a harm. So if a tongue is not bright, the religion is vain. And I'll tell you, a lot of things would be better not to ever be said. And if it has happened, check it out and make it right. So that's the end of my speech today on bridling the tongue. And don't clap your hands.